Meet Canadian politician Stephen Lewis. I'm Stephen Lewis. Meet Paula Donovan. Paula Donovan, a woman with more than 25 years of international experience. Paula has instincts where others fear to tread. Now before I continue, I want to read you something from Paula Donovan's Wikipedia page here. It says, Donovan is also an advocate for women's rights. She called for the United Nations to create a UN agency for women with financial and political clout. Her efforts resulted in the UN General Assembly passing a resolution which supported a new consolidation body to be headed by an Under Secretary General to deal with issues concerning women. The resolution merged the UN Development Fund for Women, the Division for the Advancement of Women, the Office of the Special Advisor on Gender Issues, and the UN International Research and Training Institute for the Advancement of Women. You'll see why this is important in just a moment. She realized that male circumcision was a good preventive way to slow the spread of AIDS. The hypocrisy is so thick. True or not, she wouldn't dare support female circumcision to slow the spread of AIDS, now would she? So she took that analysis further. She suggested to the male leadership in Nairobi that UNICEF propose that circumcision accompany the regular process of immunization of infants. Wait a second. Infants? And this isn't a gross violation of men's rights? That UNICEF propose that circumcision accompany the regular process of immunization of infants. No, I'm sorry. Circumcision is not an immunization. It is abuse when forced upon children. And what did the UNICEF hierarchy do at the time? They grabbed their genitals in protective embrace and laughed it off as only male sexists can laugh things off. This is truly one of the most disgusting and repulsive sentiments I have heard in a long time. You are actually implying that men who don't want to be circumcised are sexist. What about women who don't want to be circumcised? Does that make them sexist too? How are you reasoning this? Tomorrow I'll try to explain why the UN took more than a decade to see male circumcision for the inspired preventive technology that it is. Wait, what? Inspired preventive technology? Inspired preventive technology? Inspired. Gee, that almost sounds like... Hold on a second. Inspired. That sounds familiar. I need to take another look at your Wikipedia entry here. Ah, yes. Inspired. Yes. Inspired. We now know conclusively that male circumcision is a significant preventive intervention in slowing the spread of AIDS. Right, and I guess that explains why Europe is just rampant with HIV and AIDS, where they don't circumcise, right? And that explains why here in America, we pretty much don't have any HIV and AIDS, because we circumcise like mad, right? Yeah, sure. Condoms prevent AIDS, Stephen. Condoms. It's not sufficient unto itself. Safe sex must still be practiced. What the hell is the purpose of circumcision to prevent AIDS if you still have to wear a condom? Circumcised men have a 50 to 60 percent reduction in contracting HIV. Now he's talking about the results of three studies that were not double-blinded and were not properly controlled. Interestingly enough, there's other studies which show that the same thing can be done with female circumcision. Is he going to Go start promoting that? Condoms, Stephen. Condoms. Well, the truth is that the leadership of WHO, and particularly the leadership of UNAIDS, lack the courage to deal with potentially controversial issues like male circumcision. It's not controversial, Stephen. It is unethical. It is unethical to mutilate the genitals of children. Condoms, Stephen. Condoms. A lot of time was lost, and a lot of lives were lost. Yes, and a lot more lives are going to be lost when we're not circumcising females, since apparently that reduces the risk by 50%. Condoms. Fortunately, with new leadership at UNAIDS, things appear to have changed. I'm Stephen Lewis. Fuck you, Stephen. Fuck you.